um, so the blue armor parts are uh, done with the weathering. You can see I've also added scratches on the upper part of the armor. And uh, next thing we will tackle are the metallics. And uh, you can see I've rearranged the palette. Um, it's now it's a mixture of uh, Games Workshop paints and different brands. So we have the silver metallic. It's um, what's the name? I don't know. Uh, Lead Belcher. Yeah. Uh, Lead Belcher, um, a Game Workshop base color, a dark metallic. Um, some game color um, glorious gold and some chrome from Model Color Air. Here we have some uh, non metallic paints, black. A tank brown and a bit of staggered on scale green and we will start with a dark metallic tone and first paint all the um, like silver metallic parts um, I'm mixing some of the uh, dark game section metallic and I'm mixing it with a bit of black and a tiny bit of the uh, staggered on scale green just to get it a bit more blue um, that feels more natural together with the the rest of the armor. Okay, so we'll start with that centerpiece here. You can see I've tried to um, to keep that dark line around the center circle just so that I don't have to do any any outlining work myself okay you can see it's uh, it's a quite a nice tone um, but for metallics we have to make sure to at least have two layers of paint so they really overlap and we don't see um, the pigments so, uh, Usually, in a lot of metal paints, the the pigments are a little bit thicker than, uh, or bigger than in other paints. So just two layers of that should help to get an even, even base coat. Other than that, are there any other differences between uh, between the way that you work with uh, metallic paint and regular acrylic paint? I think one quite important um, thing that you have to keep in mind when you work with metallics is that you also have to control the gloss. Um, a bit more than with other paints actually because you have the natural reflectiveness of the metallics mm -hmm. and Yeah, you need to make sure that the um, The highlights still work with the with the gloss of the surface. So I like to keep my shadows a bit more uh, flatter and matter and The highlight quite extreme and shiny because that way the highlights will always be in the same position and reflect some natural light Which is um, just helping to push the contrast a little um and also to, to get to know your, your brands of paint as well, because with so many different brands now, they're, they're, they have slightly different finishes. Yeah. Um, and it's finding the one that, that you like and works for you. That's true. Um, to, to get a, even a uh, darker color on there and to get uh, the contrast stronger, um, I would just glaze over the top area here. The clean brush, pull it out a bit. Same here on the upper side. And that glaze is um, black and a bit of the staggered on scale green. You can see that glaze uh, also changed the reflectiveness of this surface quite a bit. Um, before that, uh, when I turned it like that, it was quite reflective, and now we have like a quite nice gradient on there. Mm -hmm. Want to um, still increase the contrast a bit?
Okay. Mm. You'll put a, a, a final bright highlight on the top of that round surface, yes. right? That's why I'm building it. Something that, that's still um, very, very new to me is if I see a surface, I would naturally think to work the gradient the other way to put the light straight to the top, you know? Yeah, for, for metallics, that is quite a uh, nice little um, trick actually to do the, um, the transitions the opposite way. Mm -hmm. um, plus, this way, for round objects, we can always uh, now we have here the maximum contrast on the top if we add the top reflex here. Mm -hmm. And we can do that here just with a bit of the chrome. Mm -hmm. And also on top here. And with a little bit of the darker metallics here on the these upper sides. Okay, and uh, just to bring up the the and this part here in the middle, uh, I will just add a bit of um, the chrome in, in the tip of my brush and highlight the the lower part here. Nice and super shiny again. So what you did there with the um, with the tip of your brush, it's it's kind of like what you call your loaded brush thing, right? You you loaded the brush with with quite a bit of water and just then silver on the tip. Yep. Okay. So the the normal loaded brush, I would say, it works with uh, two colors in in the brush. Um, this here is just water in the back of the brush, mm -hmm. but it's basically the very same. Um. I think for now I would uh, like to keep it like that. So this is our, our base work that we do with all the silver metallics. So we'll just continue with the small elements here on the helmet and then decide in the end if I uh, want to add a bit more of the uh, glaze of the tank brown. So here just be very careful that you don't stain all the work that you've done previously on the helmet. I mean you could still correct things but uh, you want to avoid that. Right, um, these um, these little parts here of the tube, I like to keep them uh, black, and we'll add uh, a small highlight later on with uh, some some gray and some white. Uh, same for um, these tubes or belts. We, it, I, I think nobody actually knows what what they are, uh, but um, yeah, I mean a lot of people paint uh, that in metallic and just give it a quick wash. I think uh, I like to keep it black because um, also to have a little bit more uh, variety in the color here. So that not that it's all blue and metallics, um, but yeah, I think you you got the uh, how to paint these little details as well. Here it's it's also quite important to actually just. Pay attention to the surface and also these little highlights help to, to let your eye understand the shape a lot easier. Um, I will just continue like I did before with um, the small rivets here, but I think actually it's it, there's no need for me to show that on cam. So uh, I will just proceed uh, in the very same way with um, these little details down here and we'll be back once that is done. Right. Okay. 
All right, so uh, before we uh, attach the arms, just quickly um, some highlights on the black parts here. Um, so I'm mixing some black with a little bit of white. Okay, and I try to make little dots just on the upper edge. Okay, and quite a bit darker to still uh, lighter than the black. So yeah, very simple, but I think it's, it's quite a nice addition here to have all these little highlights uh, that work really well together also with the um, quite shiny metal part in the middle. Um, talking about that metal part, um, I said earlier that we might want to introduce also a brown glaze there. Um, I think we should do that now just to spice it up a little. So, up here. Make sure you um, let e each layer dry before you uh, continue, otherwise you can get some nasty stains on there. But yeah, I think just a little bit here on that side. Okay, cool. You can uh, barely see it, but um, I think it's still a nice, nice little addition here. It also uh, ties in nicely together with the uh, dust effect here. All right, so um, once we've painted the border, we can uh, glue our arms in place and um, just the shoulder pads and the metal parts on the backpack are, um, are missing. And um, yeah, see you with the border. Thank you.